I'm trying to start the recording. Uh, yeah. Okay, welcome to your session eight of your tutorial sessions um, for STA 1610. We will continue with what we did uh, on Wednesday with today's session. We'll look at more activities. Uh, before we start with today's session, I just want to find out if you have any comments, query or question you want to ask before we start. I'm good, thank you. So there are no comments or queries. Or queries. Always remember to mute your microphone. Okay. In the absence of comments or queries, we can continue and recap on what we did. The previous Hello. session. Okay, so the last time we met, we discussed the probability distribution of a discrete variable. We looked at how to calculate the mean and the variance and standard deviation of a discrete um, variable uh, distributions. And we also looked at how we calculate the probabilities of those discrete variables as well. And what we've learned was that a discrete variable because we know from chapter chapter one that a discrete variable is a a, a quantitative numerical variable um, and because it's a discrete variable it is a variable that you get from a counting process and we also said with when we look at the probability distribution of a discrete variable, we said um, all possible outcomes are mutually exclusive because when the events happen, they do not include the other events or they do not have any influence on the other events as well. They should be also independent. And for every outcome, going to be associated also with the um, probability of its occurrence as well. Like we have this table that looks as at the interruptions per day uh, in a computer network in X variable, which has zero interruption, one interruption, two interruption, or five interruptions. And for every interruption, there are corresponding probabilities. Therefore, it repeats the number of cases, this probability gives us the, the number of cases that occur across the total sample size. And that is where we calculate the probability. And we said also we are able to calculate the mean of a discrete variable. And to calculate the mean of a discrete variable, we use the sum of your observed uh, values multiply by its corresponding uh, probability. And because it's the summation, therefore it means when you multiply your observed variable with its corresponding probability, you have to add all of them in order for you to calculate the mean, which is the population parameter mu, or we can also call it the expected value, or we can call it the mean. And we looked at the examples of how we calculate the mean, and we also said we are able to calculate the variance and we said the variance is the sum of your observed minus your expected value squared multiply that by the corresponding probability 
We also said we are able to calculate the standard deviation, which is the square root of your variance, which you just put the square root on the variance, which is the sum of your, ex your observation minus the expected value squared multiplied by its corresponding probability. And we looked at the example of how we calculate the, the standard deviation. And we said once we calculated the standard deviation, uh, before you take the square root, the value you get, it's the variance. And when you take the square root, you get the standard deviation. And we did an example of the standard deviation. Then we went on and looked at the probability. And we said, when we calculate the probability for a discrete probability distribution, we're going to always remember if they give us the weight phrases, we can tie the weight phrases back to the symbol sign, or we can use the symbol sign to make sense of it in terms of what really is it that we need to be calculating in terms of those probabilities. And you need to remember all this from now on until you go write the exam, because from now on, we're going to be using, they will give you either the symbol or they will give you either the word phrases for all the probability questions and the hypothesis questions that we're going to be looking at going forward. So you need to know this by heart. What do they mean? Uh, what do they mean when they say more than? What do they mean when they say at most? What do they mean when they say at least? What do they say when they mean between and between inclusive and in between exclusive? So you need to know all those in terms of the symbol or in terms of what the meaning of that meaning, um, of that uh, word phrase or symbol mean in order for you to answer the probabilities. And we looked at some of the examples. We did this example, and we also looked at how we, some other examples of how we calculate the probabilities and the mean, and we looked at this example as well. So we're not going to go through this exercise. Um, and also we did this exercise, we're not gonna go through it. And today we're going to continue on that. Uh, today we're going to continue on looking at the exercises or doing more activities on the discrete probabilities. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in between. Likewise, we're going to use the chat to put our answers and then we're also going to discuss the options as well. So without wasting any time, the first one, we are all going to do it together. And then the next one, I will give you some few minutes for you to go through the questions and answer it. And then we'll come back and do a feedback together. So for number one, since we forgot about what we did Wednesday, let me just refresh your mind and let's do it together in a team. So it means you guys are going to work with me and answer the questions and do the calculations. And I will write it on on the presentation. Okay. So a speech therapist. Oh, before we continue, any question? Okay. If there are no questions, uh, let me go to the chat as well just to see what you guys are saying on the chat for now. Okay, so a speech therapist knows that the number of children that consult with her on a given day is given by the following discrete probability distribution. Let X be the number of children consulting with a speech therapist on any given day and probability of X will be given by the value of X and B, and it will be associated, um, be the associated probability for that X variable. And we are given the table with the X values, which are the number of children consulting a physiotherapy, a speech therapist, and we also have their corresponding probability. Which of the following statement 
is incorrect. And that is what we are looking for. Let me get to the pen. Which of the following statement is incorrect? The probability that the speech therapist will consult with at least one child. How do we write that probability? Say because it's at least, remember from the table, the probability that X at least is greater than or equals to, and they say at least one, so therefore it means one. Greater than or equals to one. And that probability will be all the probabilities. So it will be the probability. So you will have to add the probability that X is equals to one plus the probability that X is equals to two plus the probability that X is equals to three plus the probability that X is equals to four plus the probability that X is equals to five. So it means you're going to add all these probabilities together. And the sum of all probabilities is always equals to one. Next, the probability that the speech therapist will consult with one child on a given day, because it says with one child, Therefore, it's exactly, so that will be the probability that X will be equals to 1, and that is 0, 0,1, because it is only that probability there. Where X is 1, it's 0, 0,1. Uh, sorry, I think that dot should have been here, yeah? so this should be 0, 0,1. The probability that the speech therapist will consult with no children at any given time. The probability that X will be equal to zero because it says no children. So no children means zero. So the probability mm -hmm. that the speech therapist will consult with no children. The table starts with one, ends with five. So therefore, that probability will be zero because we know if an event is uncertain, that probability will be equals to zero. Okay, the probability that the speech therapist will consult with more than five children, that will be the probability that X is greater than five, because it says more than. A more than, it's every value bigger than five, but does not include five. So what will be that probability? Like with the previous one, the table starts with one, ends with five. There is no other value or no other <clears throat> uh, outcome after, va after value five. Therefore, that probability will be equals to zero because it's an uncertain event and that will be equals to zero. The expected value, so the expected number of children consulting the speech therapist so since they are asking about the expected value, we know that our expected formula says it is the sum of your observation times its corresponding probability. Therefore, we're going to say 1 multiplied by 0 0.1 plus 2 multiplied by 0 0.15 plus 3 multiplied by 0 0.2 plus 4 multiplied by multiplied by 0 0.3 plus 5 
multiply by 0 0.25, 0 0.25. And then we're going to add all the values after we have calculated them. So 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.1. 2 times 0 0.13, 2 times 0.13 is equal to 0 0.26, so okay. it will be fast. Um, I think it's 2 times 0 0.1515, not 13. Oh, 0 0.15. Okay, sorry, it's me. I, I wrote the 0 0.15, but it didn't come out. It looks like 1.3. One three. Okay, thank you. So it's two times point one five, which is equal to zero point three, zero point three zero, and three times point two, which is plus zero point six, plus four times point. Three, you must also do the calculations so that if I go wrong on one of them, you can correct it as well. And five times 0.25, which is 1.25 plus 1.25 equals, and we can add all of them, 0.1 plus 0.3 plus 0.6 plus 1.2 plus 1.25 equals 3.45. So our expected in some writing right at the end of the page doesn't allow me to write well, so I'll just make an error. So our expected value, which is the sum of your observation times your XPS is equals to 3.45. So we know that that is correct. It was equals to one. We know that that was equals to 0 0.1. We know that this was equals to zero and that was equals to zero and that is the incorrect one. And I hope now you know how to answer the questions. So with that in mind, you have your five minutes. Let me say five minutes to answer the following question. What is the standard deviation of this answer, of this question that we have? We already, is the same question, as you can see. We already calculated the mean, so don't go ahead and calculate the mean again because we already calculated the mean. So. On this question, we know that our expected value is what? It's true. It's 3,45. It's 3,45. So now go ahead and calculate the standard deviation, which is the square root of the sum of your observed value minus your expected value squared multiply by the corresponding probability. Remember, you can also do the things inside the bracket, the square one, and then go and multiply with the, uh, the value in the bracket. So you can say one minus, so you can also start there by saying one minus 3,45 squared times 0.5. One and write the answer for it and write the answer for that one. Then say plus and then you go to the next one. Two minus 0 0.15. Wait and multiply that with 0 0.15 and then write the answer plus and then you continue. Three minus, oh sorry, four five. Three, four five. I don't know why I call it 0 0.45. 0 0.453 minus 0 uh, 3.45 squared 
and multiply that with 0 0.2 and you continue and write all the answers for all the questions and add them together when you are done. I'll give you some time to do that. When you are done and you have an answer, you can post it on the chat. I'm also waking it out.
Okay, let's see. Have we got the answer? Okay. Yes. Just one more minute. Okay. The probability that I'm getting the answer right is 50%. But we not calculating the probability, we calculating the standard deviation. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I'm saying the probability that I am getting it right is 50%. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Remember, if you if you agree with the answers given, you can just like the answers so that I can also see how many people are done. Are we done? I'm I'm done. Okay, so we already started with a couple of things, so I just need you to give me the answer for every statement that is there. So 1 minus 3,45 squared multiplied by 0, 0,1. What is the answer you get? 0, 0,60025. Yeah, at least leave your answer to three to four decimals. So it's 0, comma. Six zero 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 two five. So it will be zero comma six zero zero three. The next one two minus three comma four five squared times zero comma one five. Zero comma three one five four. Three one five four. We all agree. 3 minus 3,45 squared times 0, 0,2. 0, 0,0405. 0, OK. 4 minus 3,45 squared times 0, 0,3. 0, 0,0908. And the last one, 5 minus 3,45 squared times 0, 0,25. 0, 0,6006. Okay, so all this, what we've done, we have done what is underneath the bracket. But I'm sorry, underneath the root, this is the, we have solved the summation. We didn't do the summation. We have solved all these values. Uh, we just need to do summation. So it means we need to add all of them together. So if we add that, plus that, plus that, plus that, and get the answer, we will be doing the summation underneath the square root. So let's add all of them. When you add all of them, what do you get? 0, 0,603 plus 0, 0,3154 plus 0, 0,0404 plus 0, 0,0908 plus 0, 0,6006. You get 1, 6, 6, 4, 7, 6.
if you get seven five, it means um you were leaving your digits or you were rounding off too quickly, and that is why you're not getting it. Or you were using your whole calculator to calculate the sums. But it should be that. And our standard, if we take the square root of this standard deviation, the answer is the square root of one comma two eight three five. One comma two eight three five, which is the same as which we can estimate is the same as one comma two eight, which is option number five. Any question? There are no questions. We can move to the next one. We also have five more minutes to work it out and then we will do it together. Based on the past experience, a researcher knows that the probability distribution for X is equal to the number of students who come to her office on Wednesday in, is given by this distribution table. Which of the following statement is correct? We're looking for the correct answer, but I want you to go through all the statement, regardless of whether you know you found the correct answer as number one or number two. Just go through the rest of them so that you can see how we answer the questions. Uh, Lizzie? Yes? I'm not sure that I'm slow or what. Can you little bit go back to the exercise number two? Exercise two. Please. Uh, oh, okay. I think I've captured this Ooh, under number four, 0 0.2 instead of 0 0.3. Okay, no. Sorted now. Thanks a lot. Are we winning?
Are we winning? Are we done? I'm done. One more minute, please. Okay. Okay, that one more minute, are we done? Yes, thank you, I'm done. Okay, so let's go and answer the questions now. Okay, the first one says the probability that X is greater than two. What does that mean? It refers to the probability that X is it's zero. X is equal okay. to two plus the probability that X is equal to three. Three plus the probability that X is equal to Four. Four. Therefore, it means you're going to add zero comma five plus zero comma one five plus zero comma zero five, which is equals to zero point eight. Zero point zero. Okay. Zero point seven. Zero point seven. Yeah. Zero point seven. The next one. Hey, I just literally edited it now. Okay. <laughs> I have zero point eight. <clears throat> the probability that X is less than two. How do we represent it? Zero one. So it's where X is equal to. One and, one. X, and x is equal to zero plus okay, when x is equal yeah. to zero plus and x is equal to one which is comma so one okay. and zero comma two which is equal to zero comma three zero comma three oh, the next one the expected value, and we know that the expected value is the sum of your observation times the corresponding probability, which means we're going to say zero. Zero times zero comma one plus one times zero comma two plus two times zero comma five plus three times zero comma one five plus four times zero comma zero comma five. 
which is the same as, I'm just gonna write it at the bottom. Zero times zero comma one is zero. One times zero comma two is zero comma two. Plus two times zero comma five, it will be one comma zero. Plus three times zero comma one five, three times 15 is 45, so it will be 0, 0,45 plus 4 times 5, uh, 0, 0,05, 4 times 5 is 20, so it will be 0, 0,20. Yeah. And if you add all of them, the answer will be 1, 0,85. 85. The next one, the probability that X lies between one and four where X is less than four, but it is, sorry, X is greater than four, but it's less than or equals to four. Uh, what am I saying? X is less than one, but it's, sure, wait, my tongue is, X is greater than one, but it's less than or equals to four. Oh. And what does that mean? It means the prob we're looking for starting by see that x equals to two two because two is bigger than one plus the probability that x is equals to three, three. and oh. because it's less than or equals to so therefore it means and also four is included is equals to four. four. So it means you're going to add all those probabilities, which is 0, 0,5 plus 0, 0,15 plus 0, 0,05. Mm -hmm. And your answer is? Zero comma seven. The last one says that you need to find the probability that X lies between two and four exclusives. So it means we're looking for X is greater than two, but it's less than four. And that will be X is equals to three. X is equals three. Any number bigger than and less than four will only be three. Yes. The answer here is zero comma one five. One five. Thanks. And that's how you answer the questions. X less than three. Okay. Next question. Calculate from the following table. That contains the probability distribution for the number of traffic accidents per day in a town. What is the mean accident? What is the average number of accidents that happens in a day? In that town. Remember, the mean is your expected value, which is the sum of your ex observations times its corresponding probability.
Are we done? Uh, instead of writing options, write the actual number because I, I'm confused now with all your fours and the twos. Whether is it the four, is it the answer, or two, is it the option? So maybe be clear. Yo, because I was working at it now three times and thinking, where am I going wrong? Where are they getting four? <laughs> Someone getting two. That's <laughs> me. So, so I'm looking at them coming through and I'm thinking, oh, yeah. Eh? Is this the option or the answer to the question? So please, let's no, ask no, it clear. Number four, man, number answer four, the answer is two. <laughs> okay, are we all done? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we doing the expected mean. So you're going to give me the answers. So I'm just going to do X multiply by the probability there and write the answers. So what is zero times zero comma one? Zero. It's zero. One times zero comma two? Point two. Point two. It's point two. Two times zero comma four? Point, point nine. nine. It's point nine three times zero point five one five and four five and four five four times zero comma zero five point two point two five times zero comma zero five point two five point two five so therefore it means zero plus zero point two plus zero point nine plus zero point four five plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.25 is equals to true. if you get all of them the answer is two. Two. any question anyone who is still lost anyone who still needs help or are we all on the same page now? Yeah, no, I'm good. Okay. That means we are all riding on the same cloud. We are all on cloud nine together. So let's move on. Next question. Um, Lizzie? Yes? You will excuse me, please. I have another, I have another class I need to attend to, if it's okay with you. I will catch up the rest in the recording. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Next question.
Are we done? Yes. Okay, so number one, I think here yeah, we're missing at most. Number one, <clears throat> the probability that the speech therapist will consult with four children. That is exactly, ne? so it will be the probability that X is equals to three. X is equal to four. Four. Which is equal to? 0 0.3. 0 0.3. 0 0.3, therefore that is correct. The probability that the speech therapist will consult with at most four children. Most. At most is less than or equal, ne? Remember that? So the so probability X. that X will be less than or equals to four. Oh. Let me write the number, the actual number. It will be the probability that X is equals to one plus the probability that X is equals to two, two. plus the probability that X is equals to because it's at most plus the probability that x is equals to four. So. <clears throat> I'm going to do the long way and then I'm going to show you another shortcut. So that will be equals to adding up all those probabilities 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3, which will give you 0 0.7. Alternatively, we know that we're looking for those probabilities. We can also say the probability of X less than or equals to four is the same as one minus the complement probability, which is the probability that X is equals to five. Because that's the only one that is left on this side. If there were two, we're going to add, it will be a cumulative of those ones. X is equals to five. You can do it this way as well. You will see that you will get the same answer because the sum of all probabilities are equals to one. And therefore this will be equals to 0 0.25, which in turn will give you 0 0.75. So there is no right or wrong answer in the way you're doing it. Nobody's going to look at how you calculated it. But instead of adding all the values, you can just use the shorter value and find and use it as a complement of other events. So you can either do this that the long way or the short way. It's up to you. What is the probability that the speech therapist will consult with between two children and the biggest weight there is exclusive. Therefore, how we write that is the probability that X lies between, because it's exclusive, therefore it will be X is greater than two, but it's less than oh. four. So X is greater than two, but it's less than four, therefore it is at that point. So that will be the probability that X is equal to three. three. Then it is zero comma. Agree? Yes. Okay. The next one. The probability that the speech therapist will consult with two, between two or four children, <laughs> inclusive. <laughs> And that will be because it's inclusive, therefore X will include two, and it will also include four. And that 
Uh, and that probably to be the probability that x is equal to please mute your microphone plus the probability x is equal to three plus x is equal to four. Then it means we need to add zero comma one five plus zero comma two plus zero comma three. Um. 0, 0,15 plus 0, 0,2 plus 0, 0,3. 3. And that probability will be equal to 0, 0,65. 0, 0,65. Yeah. Last one. The probability that the speech therapist will meet with at least four children then we're looking for what is at least equal at least or more bigger than or equal ne? Yes. so that will be the probability that x is more than or equal to four which then will include the probability that x is equals to four plus the probability that x is equal to 5, which is 0, 0,3 plus 0, 0,25, which is 0, 0,55. Five, five. Five, five. That is the incorrect answer that you are looking for. Any questions? Happy? Yes, happiness. Happiness. Yeah. Question number six. Can go ahead and do it. Are we done?
Are we winning? Are you are you winning? Have we answered uh, on this? So that at least confirming what I'm also confirming. Um, yes, I think there is there was an errata probably sent through with this question. If it was an assignment question or an exam paper, then people who write those that exam paper they they got free for marks as well. Um, there are two correct answers. There are two incorrect answers. Yes, that's I what I feel. It's incorrect. <laughs> that's why we were not responding. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's answer the questions. <coughs> Do this. So the first one is asking. What is the probability of P3? So now P3 is the value there. So therefore we can say that is one minus the sum of all the other completed probabilities that we have on the table, uh, which will be the complement of P3. So we'll say one minus all of those values, which is 0, 0,3 plus 0, 0,1 plus 0, 0,24 plus 0, 0,1 plus 0, 0,12, which is equals to 1 minus 0, 0,8. Sum all of them, you get 86, 0, 0,86. Did you all get that? Yes. Okay. Yes, we did. And that will be 1 minus 0, 0,86 0, 0,14. So now we do have this probability is 0, 0,14. Now we can answer the question number two. What is the probability that is like 0 and 3 exclusive? This will say the probability that it's zero, more, uh, greater than zero will include x is equals to one, plus the probability that x is equals to two, but it does not include three. So then it's only those two because it does not include three and it also does not include zero. So then it will be zero comma one plus zero comma two four which is equals to 0, 0,34. Okay. Number three, what is the probability that at least at least means the probability that x is greater than or equals to four. Four. And that will be Zero. probability One. x is equals to four plus the probability that x is equals to five, Five. which is 0, 0,1 plus 0, 0,12. 
which is equals to 0, 2, 2, 2. So when they, probably when they did this question, and I think it comes from 2018 tutorial letter 101. So when they did that question, whoever wrote that, uh, assume that at least was great what was the same as at most because that answer would have given you the at most answer. But uh, yeah, so they had assumed that incorrectly. The probability that at most two students, so this is at most two students, which will be the probability that x is less than or equals to 2, then it means it's any value including 2. So it will be the probability that x is equals to 0 plus the probability that x is equals to 1 plus the probability mm. that x is equals to 2. Two. And that will be 0, 0,3 plus 0, 0,1 plus 0, 0,24. Correct? Yes. Yes. And that will be 0, 0,64. And the last question, the probability, probability that all students will attend the class is the probability of all students. Therefore, we can also collect the probability that X is greater than or equals to one because it's referring to all students. And when it's referring to all students, zero does not refer to all students. So the number of students who miss class zero means zero students or who miss class. Sorry, wait. The number of students who miss class are those ones. So it is equals to uh, all students who miss class. We need to be very careful with this. So this will be all students who miss class. I need to write it correctly inside here. All missed class students, or oh, all students who missed class, something like that. So we need to be very careful when we answer this question. Uh, the probability that all students miss class, the probability that not miss class, the probability that all students will attend. Ah, oh, gosh. The probability that all students attend the class. So that is the same as the zero. So zero means all students attended the class. They didn't miss because this says our X is the number of students who miss a class. So zero will mean they all attended the class. One will mean one student missed the class, two students missed the class, three students missed the class, four students missed the class, and five students missed the class. Zero will mean no students missed the class. So that will be the probability that all students attended will be equals to zero, and that will be equals to zero comma three zero. Therefore, option number three is the incorrect one. So you need to think what are you saying? of the statement given. Is it? Yes. What are you saying? Can you, why I'm confused with the zero and okay. from, so from the statement, statement of the state. question? Yeah. You're saying X is what? Okay. 
So X is the number of students who miss a class. Okay. Remember that. X okay. is the number of students who are miss or, or who missed a class. If it's zero, it means no student missed a class. Mm -hmm. If it's one, it means one student missed a class. If it's two, two students missed a class. If it's three, three students missed a class. So now, if we say zero is no student missed a class, therefore it's the same thing as saying all students attended the class at that day. Because one will mean not all students attended a class. Two will mean not all students attended a class. Three will mean not all students attended a class because three students would have missed the class. The question we were asked was that all students attended the class. If they would have said all students did not attend the class, then it's a different question. It's a different total question altogether. Lizzie? Yes? I, I, I'm confused. Uh, let's go back to question four. It says the probability that at most two students will miss a class on Friday. Yeah. Then when we calculated, we included the zero. Yes. And you are saying because zero is... Yes. Yes. You are saying... We would include zero because at most, at most refers to either all students came to class at least, or oh, at most one student came to class, at most two students came to class. It includes all of them. It includes an instance where everybody was in, was in class. Because if you say at most, when you say at most, it will include even those who, on those days where everybody came to class. Okay. The tricky part would, would have been if they would have said, at most, two students attended a class. We have, we don't have the, the, we don't have information about that, where there were only two students in class. We don't have that. We, the only thing we know is, either everybody in the class came, or we know that. One student missed the class. We also know that two students missed the class. That's all what we know. And that's what we can calculate. And if no student missed the class, in a way, is the same thing as everybody has come to class on that day. Because nobody missed the class. So when they give you sentences, you need to think long and hard in terms of understanding and unpacking the statement, the, the question in relation to the mm -hmm. statement. And you will find in most cases, you will always do that. You will always have to go back and, and think about what you are given in relation to what you are asked. Okay. Right, moving forward, if there are no other questions or clarity on that. Based on the past experience, a researcher knows that the probability distribution of X is equals to, uh, that D is supposed to be equals, is equals to the number of students who come to her office on a Monday. We did a similar question before, but now we have different statements. Which of the following statements is correct? So remember that X represents the number of students who come to her office on a, a Monday. There can be zero students, so it means no students came to, to visit her office. 
One student came, two students came, three students, and so forth. Number one, what is the probability of at least? Number two, what is the probability of at least two? Calculate the expected value of x and calculate the variance and calculate the probability that x lies between two and four. Let's do the working. We're looking for the correct answer name.
Are we winning? Are we done? Do we have an answer? Nobody has posted anything. Are you still struck by the all student question? Okay, so let's do it together. Since I see nobody has answered the question. Miss Liz, we're still busy. Can you give us a please? No, are you still busy? But I'm asking and you're not answering, so I'm, you need to talk to me. Okay, I'll give you uh, um, two minutes, please. Okay, I'll give you five more minutes at 25 to we can look at it. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna go make myself coffee when I come back. We'll look at it. Okay, are we done? Okay, so let's Silence means you are done. The first question, probability that at least one student, so to answer that will be the probability that X is greater than one. Also the same thing we can do here because instead of adding all the values going there because it's all of them, 
we can say one minus the probability that X is equal to zero, which is one minus zero comma one, which will give us zero comma nine. Happy? No answer. Please, Lizzie, can you repeat? Instead of eating all of the values, because it's the same thing as 0, 0,5 plus 0, 0,2, which gives us 0, 0,7 plus 0, 0,15 will give us 0, 0,85 plus 0, 0, 0,05 will give us 0, 0,9. Instead of doing it that way, the probability of X greater than 1 will be equal to 0, 0,5 plus 0, 0,2 plus 0, 0,15 plus 0, 0, 0,05, which is the same as 0, 0,9, we can take a shortcut and say a complement. Because there is only one thing in this side, we can say it's one minus that one thing. Okay, thanks, Elizabeth. Yeah. Understand? I'm still confused. No, I understand. I understand. Okay. Because the sum of all probabilities are equal to one. Instead of spending more time calculating and adding so many numbers, you can just use the one that is left out of the pack to calculate the rest of the other probability. So the probability that at most two students will be the probability that X is less than or equals to two. And it means it's all of them going there. We can also say it is the same as the probab one minus. You can do it this way as well. One minus the sum of all the greater than probabilities. One minus. You can say it will be one minus the probability of X greater than two, which is the complement. So this is a complement of less than or equal to, which is the same as one minus the probability of X equals to three plus the probability that X is equals to four. I know you did it the other way around. I just wanted to give you an alternative, which will be one minus 0, 0,15 plus 0, 0,5. 0, 0,5, which should give you um, 0, 0,8. So if you have done it the other way around, you would have said it is 0, 0,20 plus 0, 0,50 plus 0, 0,10. It will give you the same answer. You would have gotten the probability that X is less than or equals to 2 will give you 0, 0,1 plus 0, 0,2 plus 0, 0,5 will give you 0, 0,8. 8, 0, which is the same thing as doing the complement probability. So you can use either one method, either one of them. Okay, so the next one was to find the expected value. So the finding the, expect, finding the expected value we can use the table and multiply. So 0 times 0, 0,1 will be 0. 1 times 0, 0,05 will be 0, 0,5. 2 times 0, 0,20 will be 0, 0,4. 3 times 0, 0,15 will be 0, 0,45. 4 times 0, 0,05 will give us 0, 0,20. And this is x times. Px. And if we want to put the summation, then we just need to add all of these values, and that will give us, if we add all of them together, the sum of all of them will give will give us 0, 0,05 plus 0, 0,04 is 0, 0,09 plus 0, 0,045. 
plus 0, 0,2. 0 gives us 1,45. 1,55. Am I having yes. the right answer? Yes. 1.55, yes. 1.55. This would be equals to 1.55. And we know that that is wrong. This is going to be wrong as well. The variance. With the variance, we need to subtract. So you need to go and subtract. So I'm going to say the variance. I'm going to add, uh, do the x minus some uh, x minus the expected, which is 1.15 squared times the probability, which is 0 0.10. Let me know if you're not getting the right the answers as I am getting which is 0, 0,2403 plus 1 minus 1,55 squared times 0, 0,05, I get 0, 0,1513. 2 minus 1,55 squared times 0, 0,20. I get 0, 0,0 sorry 0.405. Do you all get the same? Plus yes. 3 minus 1.55 squared uh, times 0, 0.15. I get 0, 0.3154. Plus uh, 4 minus 1,55 squared times 0, 0,05, I get 0, 0,3001. Did you all get the same? Yes. 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 If I add all of them, 0, 0,2403 plus 0, 0,1531. Plus zero comma zero four zero five plus zero comma three one five four plus zero comma three zero zero one equals I get one comma and I'm going to round it off one comma zero five. Do you all get the same? Yes. Thank you. Yes. So that means that is also incorrect. The last one, it says, find the probability that X lies between two, two and four. So if I go to my X lies between two and four, so X is less than, or oh, X is greater than two, so it goes there, but it is less than or equals to four, so it starts from four and it goes there, but it does not include two, so therefore it's only those two. So this will be the same as finding the probability that x, this will be x is equal to 3 plus the probability that x is equal to 4, which is 0, 0,15 plus 0, 0,05, which is equal to 0, 0,2, which means also that one is incorrect. And the correct answer is number two. In the exam, you don't have to go through all the statements. As soon as you get the answer as two, just tick two and carry on. So here is for practice purpose, so that you get used to. X is less than two. How we solve the oh, probability distribution oh, questions. Oh, we left with 15 minutes. I think I have only three more questions left. So let me just double check. Uh, or two. I have four questions, five, four, five. Some, some things, some way went wrong with my number of counting. Four, five questions left. So <clears throat> we can do the next one. We can do it together now without you with um. Looking at it, I just want to do it for you. The probability distribution of this discrete variable x 
What is the probability that x is greater than 1? So we're looking for x greater than 1. Does not include 1. So those are the probabilities. So it will be the probability that x is equal to 2 plus the probability that x is equal to 3. So it will be 0, 0,2 plus 0, 0,15. Which is zero comma three five. Happy next. Yes. Yes. Correct. I'm gonna do eight and then you do nine. You will do this. Uh, no, we will skip nine. You will do ten. Uh, let's see ten. Yes, you will do ten. Let me just do eight all together. So the probability that x is uh, less than or equals to 2 or at x is at most 2 is given by the probability probability that x is equals to 0 because it is less than or equals to 2. So it will include 0. x is equals to 1 plus the probability that x is equals to 2. And that will be 0, 0,25. Plus zero comma four zero plus zero comma two, which is zero comma two four six sixty five plus two zero point eight five zero point eight which means that is correct. The next one it says it is between. So we're going to look at the between. It says x is greater than 1. So it starts at 1. And it's greater than 1. So it goes that way. But it is, x is less than or equal to 2. So it stops right here at 2. And it goes there. So it's only those two. So it means is the probability that x is equal to 1 plus the probability that x is equal to 2. Happiness? Which then is yes. 0, 0,4 plus 0, 0,2, which is equal to 0, 0,6. X. Mm. Next one says yes. the probability that x is less than 1. Mm -hmm. So with less than one, it does not include one. So it is any value less than. So therefore, it's the same as the probability that x is equal to zero. And that will be 0, 0,25. Which means also that it is correct. The last one says x lies between zero and one. So says x is greater than 0, so it does not start at 0, so if any of the values greater than 0, so greater than 0, it means starting from there, not including 1, uh, not including 0, but it is also less than 1, so therefore it means it starts from less than or equals to 1, it starts from there and it goes and it gets blocked from there. So therefore, it's the same as the probability that x is equal to 1, and that probability is 0, 0,4. And that is the incorrect one. And this is your homework. You can go and do this. They have calculated already the mean. So it means you can just use the mean to answer the question, because they want you to calculate the variance, which is sigma squared, or vx, which is the sum of your observation minus the expected squared times the corresponding probability. They already gave you the expected value. All you just need to do is substitute and calculate the rest of the values. That is your homework. Your homework, that is one. This you can do in uh, also homework. I want to give you the one that you can do in five minutes. You can calculate number 11. 
What is the expected value of the value of effective wealth? That you can do now. Are we winning? Okay, let's calculate that. So zero times zero point six is zero, ne? Zero, yes. One times zero point two. Zero point two. Zero point two. And two times zero point one. Zero point two. Zero point two. Three times zero point zero five. Zero point one five. And four times zero point zero three. Zero point one two. And five times zero point zero one. Zero point zero five. And six times zero point zero 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 one. 
0.06. And we can just add them 0 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.15 plus 0 0.12 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.06. And the answer we get is? 0 0.78. 0 0.78, which is option number three. This you can also do as homework if you want to go through it. I think this comes from STA 1610 exam paper of 2019. May, June 2019 is the only exam paper on your site as well. So you can go through it. Mm. Um, and please be reminded when you, when you get hold of past exam papers uh, from before 2020, any past exam paper before 2020, because there are scanned papers, you will notice that there will be missing do uh, dots. I just replaced the dots here, but on most of the documents, you will realize that there are missing dots. You, When you see a space, you must know that there is a dot there. Okay, so this you can also do as homework, and this should be 12, not 11. And that concludes today's session. Any question? So we are on the route or on the way to completing our study unit five in order for you to be able to do your assignment two. Uh, by next next week Wednesday, we would have we will cover the rest of study units five, which includes binomial and also. Poisson distribution. And then on Saturday, we are going to do all the activities. I might have a challenge on Saturday because I'm going to a place where the network is not that stable, but I will let you know. If we are unable to connect, I will record the video and post it on my UNISA um, for you to be able to continue and be able to do your, your assignment. So I will record the session for Saturday. But if we are able to connect on Saturday and we are able to continue, then we will continue. So, but let's see how it goes on Saturday. If the, the connection is a challenge, then I will record the session when I get time and then post it or um, post it for you so that you are able to continue. Otherwise, I will see you on Wednesday. And if there is any question or query, feel free to ask. Thank you for joining the class today. Any comment or question? In the absence of comments or questions or queries,